All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. It is Friday. Happy Friday to everyone out there. We got March 29th and a decent sized MLB slate to dive into in today's video like we always do. We're going to go through each and every one of these games. I'll give you my lean on the side. I'll give you my lean on the total. We'll talk about any player props that I like within the game as well. But as always, keep an eye on the pinned comment. That's where all of my final plays will live. If you do want to do the opposite and fade me, keep an eye on the pinned comment. Last night, or yesterday, I should say, uh, wasn't the best of days. We go three and five there. Um, most plays were half unit or quarter unit plays. I told you guys in the video, be conservative. Like MLB is so analytical that we want a couple weeks for the data to come in. Um, and this is a good example of why. Like, yes, three and five, not the best. Nothing that's going to kill us long term. But yeah, the guppies were out yesterday. I love people thinking that they're giving me the game updates like I'm not following myself in the comments. But nonetheless, guys, a three and five night. Hope to do better to night here um, and we got a big slate like I said and some decent games with some decent value so let's go ahead and jump right into it hit that subscribe button hit that like button as well actually I want to talk about something we'll try this out it's not necessarily the ride of the day like we do and we will do once basketball is over but I kind of want to get into the daily dinger here so guys use hashtag daily dinger in the comments and name someone you think is going to hit a home run today and then I'll pick someone that gets it right and give a shout out in tomorrow's video so use that hashtag daily dinger and let me know someone you think is going to go deep in the MLB today. We'll try that out. It's a new hashtag. We'll see how it works. We've never done it before. But let's jump into game number one here. We have the Mets taking on Milwaukee. Um, both teams, obviously, their first game of the season. I believe this was supposed to play uh, take place yesterday on opening day, but uh, got postponed. But nonetheless, on the mound here, um, we have Quintana going up against Peralta, if I am not mistaken. I don't think anything's confirmed yet. It's pretty early right now. But uh, as of right now, that is uh, my understanding here. It's pretty much a pick -em. Mets minus 106, Milwaukee minus 105 in terms of money line odds total, sitting at 7.5. I'm going to lean towards Milwaukee. I think that's the better ball club. Uh, my one concern is that the Mets are at home. Um, that's a little worrisome. But overall, I do think Milwaukee's the better ball club here. And, you know, halfway through the year, if you were to look at these odds, it's probably Milwaukee with their ace, right? Minus 145 against the Mets. So I do think there's a little bit of value to be able to snag them here at minus 105 over on DK. In terms of a total I'll lean towards the over. I could see this being like a 5-4 game or a 5-3 game in favor of Milwaukee. So I'll lean towards the over in this spot. But again, guys, a lot of these totals and how many runs teams are scoring and how pitchers are playing, like we really do want more data to be able to back these up. So for the next, you know, I don't know, maybe a couple of weeks, like all of these plays that we even make our final plays are probably going to be half unit plays, quarter unit plays, that type of thing. And if you don't know what a unit is, the easiest way, because I'm a dumb dumb, the easiest way I can explain it is take your normal bet amount. I know that there's ways to calculate it with your bankroll take two percent of that you could do that but what i like to think is what is your normal you know bet amount if you're a ten dollar better a half unit would be five dollars a quarter unit would be two dollars fifty cents if you're a hundred dollar better a half unit would be fifty dollars it's pretty much your standard measure of you know your bet amount and then that is a unit i know a lot of people ask that question all the time in terms of a player prop here, um, let's jump into Outlier, guys. If you guys do want to check out Outlier, I'll have a link in the pinned comment for it. Seven days free with this. I'm looking at Jeff McNeil here, under .5 strikeouts. So he closed off last season really well with no strikeouts. Um, a little concerning that he does have um, some strikeout history here. 50% K rate against Freddie Peralta. But if we take a step back for a second, you could see um, Freddie Peralta against left-handed batters. That strikeout rate actually drops from 30.9 down to 26%. So we do have a little bit of an advantage there, right? And he walks a few more guys as well. And he's going to throw a lot of fastballs. Look at what the strikeout rate does. It goes from 10%, which is already fairly low for Jeff McNeil, right? Down to 7%. So I like this spot from him. the fastballs. I don't think you're going to be concerned. Just get balls in play. We're not asking him to get a hit. We're just looking for Jeff McNeil to not strike out, which he ended the year doing that fairly, fairly well. Um, let's keep that going in this, uh, you know, opener for them today. Next up, we have Phillies. Zach Wheeler on the mound going up against Spencer Strider of the Atlanta Braves. Obviously, this is uh, a battle of two really good teams here, um, but I think Atlanta's the better team. Uh, similar to, and I know, I know the Phillies are good. Like, obviously, the odds are kind of telling us that as well, right? If you take the Phillies, you're getting plus money. But Atlanta at minus 125, I don't really care who they play. 
that seems like good value to start the season, right? So I'll take Atlanta. I don't like them on the run line here. If you're going run line, you might want to consider the Phillies. I think it's going to be a close game, but I like Atlanta on the money line, um, as well as taking a peek at the over. I think there's two decent offenses here behind the, um, you know, at, at, at bat. Yes, we have two really good pitchers, but we've seen uh, these pitchers, I guess, to some degree struggle, um, at times, even against one another in the past. So, uh, though I do think, you know, the pitching can be really good, like, both these offenses should be able to outlast the pitcher to some degree, get to the bullpen, and then we're not looking for that many runs, right? Like, seven. It's the lowest, tied for the lowest total on the slate today. Like, I'm not telling you this is going to be a Spencer Strider and Zach Wheeler get their uh, heads blown off by the offenses. No. But this could be a 4-3 game in the, you know, the the seventh inning, and we've already pushed. If this was 7.5, it wouldn't be something that I really love, and I don't even love it right now. But sitting at 7, I do think that there is some value um, in taking it over here. We saw tons of high-scoring games uh, yesterday as well. So give me Atlanta as well as the over. Um, and instead of, you know, giving you my leans, I'll show you a bunch of uh you know outlier what they have here a bunch of hit props uh that actually look like you know they close out the season pretty well you have uh Oz- Ozzie Albies, Matt Olson, Marsh, um Real Muto and the odds here on FanDuel we're up kind of early so we don't have tons of um props available to us in fact you can see the only two props that we have right two games we have are the two that we looked at so it's probably gonna be a light prop video at least for the video purposes but um we could consider some of these guys to get a hit because obviously like i said really good offense you have uh trey turner bryce harper brandon marsh matt olson um all these guys ronald acuna jr all these guys in um the lineup here one play uh, that was brought up in the stream that could be something that we consider would be Acuna uh, for over one and a half bases for plus money. I could see that happening. Um, he is going up against, again, Zach Wheeler, who's a right-handed pitcher. Acuna against righties. I'm um, actually just jump right back into outlier to make it easier. Uh, Acuna against righties uh, looks pretty good. 337 batting last year, 343 against righties. My concern is that Zach Wheeler pitches well against righties, but he's actually fair, faced off fairly well, fairly well. I'm not, you know, blown don't smoke up your ass here um, against Zach Wheeler with 11 hits, 614 slugging percentage, that type of thing. So for plus money, there could be some value in Acuna today. All right, guys, before we jump into the rest of the slate, I did want to shout out the merch brand we have here on the channel, Fade Me. If you guys do want to pick up some merch and support what we're doing here, head over to FadeMe.store. We got tons of cool stuff. We have the hockey jersey that just launched, as well as this cool new hat here, an embroidered Fade Me hat. Um, it comes in three different colors. Uh, I really do like this Um just design it's simple i know we're talking baseball here but it is a basketball uh, a basketball design but we got tons of stuff over on fade me guys again if you're liking the channel and you want to support and continue to support go ahead and check it out fade me dot store this is real you know clothing this isn't i know i say merch but we've put a lot of time and effort into these designs into the product so go check it out fade me dot store Next up, we have Tampa Bay taking on Toronto, a game that burned us yesterday. Um, And like I said, this is going to be a pretty light props video from here on out. We will put some props if we find them, player props, in the pinned comment. But just because we got to do our NBA video as well, you know, kind of getting this, um, getting up and getting this one out there. Not all the props are on the board as of right now. So apologies there, but we're still going to break down the games, but just less on the the prop side, I guess. Um, But like I said, this game kind of burnt us yesterday. I liked Tampa Bay and I still like them today, but maybe I'm a sucker here because I do think it's a good spot, but Toronto beats them yesterday. 8-2. 8-2. to two. It was a 1-1 game for a while, and then all of a sudden, um, I checked the score, and it's 8-2, to two, and I was like, what happened there, right? Um, but Tampa Bay has Aaron Savale on the mound. If you guys can date back to last season, I like Savale. Obviously, he came over um, midway through the year, and I do really think that he's a good pitcher. Um, does he have the, the track record against Toronto? Not necessarily. Um, both these guys actually have pitched fairly meh against the uh, the opposing team. Actually, uh, Chris Bassett on the mound for Toronto has pitched well against Tampa Bay, so excuse me there. But I do think that this is a Tampa Bay team uh, that should bounce back. I think they're the better team. I still think they're better than Toronto. Toronto has a really good, uh, you know, uh, I guess... Bo Bichette, uh, Vlad Jr., and then George Springer, and then it's kind of like, okay, well, that the rest of the lineup isn't all that tremendous. They looked good yesterday, but two of those guys I mentioned hit home runs, right? So it's like that top of the lineup, the first third is really, really good, um, but I want to see how long they can last here, and I'm, I'm going to take Aaron Savale, my man, uh, on the mound today. So I'm going to lean towards uh, them on the money line. In terms of a total Give me the under. Uh, I don't think the Blue Jays offense explodes like it did yesterday. And I can see this being like a 4-3, 4-2 type of a win for Tampa Bay. But hey, you can always fade me. What do I know, right? 
Miami taking on Pittsburgh here. Miami uh, ends up losing yesterday. Uh, we were we that was just a lean, but we were wrong about that one as well. On the mound for them today is going to be AJ Puke going up against Martin Perez uh, on the mound here for Pittsburgh. Though I do think the Pirates have the pitching advantage today, I am going to lean towards Miami in this spot ever so slightly. And I also don't mind taking a peek at the over either. Uh, yesterday's game, this one ends 6-5. to five. Um, Miami was up decent, then Pittsburgh comes back. Both pitchers, you know, pitch five innings, Lazardo and Mitch Keller. Um, decent amount of hits in this game. I could see this being a very similar thing with Puke and or Puck. I don't even, I mean, I don't want to be calling him Puke, Puke Monster over here, but and Perez on the mound. Uh, so I think this is a very similar type of a game uh, where it gets to, you know, potentially nine runs or something. I've also seen some books have this listed right now at eight. So if we can get seven and a half, I think there's some value there because obviously there's some movement that agrees with a theory on this game here. And like I mentioned, though we don't have the props at our disposal, I would consider taking a peek at the hits allowed for both pitchers in terms of player props in this spot. Next up, Houston taking on New York. And by the way, we got some player props to load. So forget what I said. We might have some more player props here. Um, we got Houston taking on New York. So this game looked like it was a Houston game all through, right? It was like four and four to one, if I'm not mistaken. And then they end up losing five to four. But today we have Christian Javier going up against uh, Rodon. And I really have never been able to get behind uh, Rodon, to be completely honest. Uh, so I'm going to lean towards Javier. He isn't necessarily my favorite pitcher, but um, I don't mind him. And you have Rodon who throws just a ton of fastballs. He's going to go 60 plus percent fastballs here in terms of what he did last year. Why would that change? And look at if I just filter the Houston lineup to fastballs, watch the Wobas. Green means they hit that better than their average normal, right? Look at that. All but three guys jump into the green there as well as their K rate dropping. Uh, so I do like this spot. And you can see against left-handed pitchers here at Houston, last year the lowest K percentage, fifth best average, 11th hard hit percentage. Um, so I'm going to be looking at Houston on the money line as well as Rodon's over and hits and potentially taking a peek at his under four and a half strikeouts. I wouldn't consider this if it wasn't plus money. So let me make that clear. I could see him getting to five strikeouts, but for plus money, it could be a good spot. And if you guys don't know, plus money is a major factor in baseball um it's not like nba or football where you're kind of taking these 50 50 props like plus money is a major factor in baseball if you can identify value in it but nonetheless guys looking at some of those spots for Rodon to be weak as well as houston on the money line in this spot and then in terms of the total it's sitting at nine right now uh, i'll take the under uh though i just said i think that you know houston can kind of tee off on Rodon. i'm not necessarily saying that they put up uh you know 10 runs or anything like that and yesterday's game being five to four and only landing at nine like that was a pretty offensive game for the first half of the game from houston and then the second half of the game uh from the yanks and it was still only landing at nine like if we see any a smidge of better pitching here like Valdez only pitched what he didn't even make it into the sixth inning right so if we see a better pitching from um, either side to some degree we should be looking at like a lower scoring game maybe like a 4-3 type of a game where yeah there's tons of hits but there's still defensive plays to stop those guys from coming in so slightly lean towards the under there all right, Arizona taking on Colorado. Um, Arizona wins. Uh, I don't know if I could count that high, but it was 16 to 1 yesterday. Uh, similar to, we'll have a similar analysis when we get to the Dodgers, St. Louis. Like, Arizona is much better than Colorado. You're not going to catch me taking Colorado for any reason, but I don't think there's value in taking Arizona either. So probably a game that we kind of uh, decide to, to somewhat skip in this spot, even from a props perspective. Uh, I don't necessarily love much. So yeah, give me Arizona as well as the over, and we can kind of move on because there's not much value in taking Arizona at minus 220. But, you know, we could start to see some like Arizona Dodgers parlays here, but, you know, the minute we do that, you know, you know what hits the fan. So uh, I'll take them um, in terms of a lean here, but not much value in terms of taking them uh, from a betting perspective. But I don't mind the over either. I do think I, I do think that Arizona could uh, kind of carry the scoring load again. And then all you got to ask for is Colorado to score a little bit more than one run from yesterday um, with Kelly on the mound. Uh, you know, it's not exactly like going up against Zach Gallen. Um, he's still a good pitcher, so it's not really a guarantee. Next up, we got Oakland taking on Cleveland. This is one where so many people are in the comments being like, that's stupid, like Oakland, they're much better this year, but ain't nothing. Eight nothing. I wish we made this a final play. Um, kind of missed out there because it was a play that I liked. I just couldn't get it over the finish line. But uh, <laughs> it's it stinks because I can't brag about it either, right? I can rag on people saying that they were, you know, Atlanta. Uh, excuse me, uh, Oakland was going to win, blah blah. But I didn't take Cleveland as a final play, so. 
Uh, I can't brag about it too much. But uh, I think we're in a similar spot today. On the mound, we have Logan Allen going up against Ross Stripling. Um, and for what it's worth, kind of like I said yesterday, like I don't think you're going to be getting uh, good odds like this uh, throughout the season when it comes to taking a bet against Oakland. I'm not, I'm not a believer in them. I think that, uh, you know, some people, for whatever reason, maybe it's because they have the cool jerseys. Uh, they really do like the team, but I just don't really believe in it. And I do think uh, there is some value in taking the Guardians here uh, early on in the season because if you have this matchup midseason, it's almost going to be like a minus 160 play. Right now, you can get it for minus 130. So give me the Guardians here. I'm trusting Logan Allen on the bump for them. In terms of player props in this spot, uh, nothing totally jumping off the page to me. Um, because you can't really trust uh, much on the Oakland side of things. And to be completely honest, I'm not going to sit here and, and you know, say that I think Logan Allen's going to go out there and, and strive. But I don't think he's going to have a bad game either. And they've pegged his strikeout line right at 5.5, which, like, if you were to, without me knowing the line, I would have said, yeah, he's going to get maybe five or six strikeouts. Look where the line is, right? So no major player props jumping off the page to me here either. In terms of a total, what I will say is, I don't think Oakland has a dormant offensive game like they did yesterday with zero runs. Uh, so if I think Cleveland wins this game substantially and Oakland can put in a few, I'll lean towards the over seven and a half here. I know we're taking a decent amount of overs, um, but we did see a decent amount of overs hit yesterday. So I could see this one being like a, uh, you know, 5-4 game or 6-4, that type of thing. Decent amount of runs in this spot because if they go to the bullpens, uh, should see some late scoring. All right, all right. I'm not going to keep talking about people that were wrong in the comments, but I'll do it one more time. People are like, why are you been this, uh, the, the Red Sox? They stink. I said that I liked them on the run line for, uh, you know, plus money, and Brian Bayo is going to be one of the only guys that I could trust. Pavetta's on the mound today, so I think it's a different story. I'm flipping over to Seattle. Uh, I don't like the, the I, I mean, Pavetta can be a good pitcher. We've seen him pitch really well, but you know, we've also seen him get knocked around the park like a ragdoll. So uh, I'm not trusting it. I'm going to take Seattle in this spot. Um, George Kirby on the mound for them. If you tell me George Kirby versus Nick Pavetta, uh, you know, I'm taking Kurt Kirby all day long. So I like that spot for them. The total's down to seven. It opened up at seven and a half, which is a little interesting, I guess you could say. Uh, I'll lean towards the under. I don't think the Red Sox score six runs today. And the Mariners probably stay right around that four or five mark. They scored four yesterday. Uh, so again, if I think Seattle wins this game and their maximum is five runs, uh, I could see this being like at max uh, a five, three game, which would kill our under. But if we have one run shaved off on either side there, we're looking at seven or less. So uh, yeah, I definitely like the Mariners more than I do taking a peek at that total in terms of player props in this spot. Um, I hate to say it again nothing much jumps out at me uh could be a spot in which we look at masataka yoshida again um for his over in hits um but it's getting juiced now he had two total bases yesterday um, but now you're looking at minus 180 uh but i like the fact that he's going up against a right-handed pitcher his average jumps there and kirby against left-handed batters his average jumps and masataka yoshida against fastballs which is going to be a lot of what kirby throws does fare pretty well so if we can you know take that juice it could be a spot that we look at from a player prop perspective all right, if you guys made it this far into the video, go ahead and comment 18 in the comments. We had a great, uh, you know, response from the video yesterday. Yes, the picks were kind of like, meh, kind of like a toss-up, but, uh, you know, it's all, it, I, I would go own a million and continue to make videos like I told you guys yesterday. So I appreciate everyone that tunes in and stays till the end like this. So if you made it this far into the video, that means you ain't no... You ain't no guppy, right? Go ahead and comment 18. Let me know that you made it this far into the video. We're looking at the Padres here taking on the, I almost said the 49ers, taking on the Giants. Uh, Musgrove on the mound going up against Kyle Harrison. Uh, Kyle Harrison, I'm not going to trust. I think I'll trust Musgrove a little bit more. Um, but the last time he played against San Diego, he didn't look all that great. Uh, but I do think San Diego has the better offense um, in this spot. They win yesterday 6-4 to four as well. Um, but Logan Webb actually pitched better, I would say. You can make the argument he pitched better than you, Darvish, even. Uh, again, to some degree, uh, based on like the length that they go into the game. Um, obviously, you look at that final score, and it's like, well, it doesn't really matter because the Padres won that game. Um, but I'll take them again. It's a little bit out of my comfort zone for juice. Minus 150 is a little bit too much. Um, but again, like we got to get ourselves in baseball mode. Baseball, you can have more juice in plays and also take more underdogs. And it should kind of, uh, that's more or less the recipe for success versus basketball, football, all those other sports that are, you're looking at minus 110, minus 115 plays as your bread and butter. Baseball is going to be like win when you can win and take these flyers. Um, and if you hit a few of these flyers, it's going to be a big deal. So maybe minus 150 shouldn't be too much in, in our brains here. In terms of a total in this spot, 
Yesterday, like I said, 6-4 game. I think we come back down to earth a little bit. I could see this being like a 4-2 win for the Padres or something like that. So I'm going to lean towards the under as well. Um, I know I say 4-2. I don't really love the run line, um, but I kind of complained about the odds. So I guess one consideration could be taking the run line for plus 145. Um, it kind of fits right into what I was saying. Take the Flyers when you can uh, for this Padres team, just because I don't really believe in Kyle Harrison. But I'm not the biggest Joe Musgrove fan, but I do think they have a pitching edge today. And nothing really that I'm loving from player props in this game. All right, Dodgers taking on St. Louis uh, should be, uh, I guess, uh, an easy one for the Dodgers here in this spot. They win 7-1 to one yesterday. Maybe we do have some fun and go Dodgers um, Dodgers parlay with Arizona. I don't even know what we could get there. Uh, jumping into Outlier, we can actually figure that out pretty quickly. So if we find the... Where are, they, where are these where are these damn Diamondbacks? Money line, money line. What's the best odds out there? Plus 105, plus 110. So we can go plus 110 on FanDuel. Maybe this is the way that we play both these teams um, because I do think that there's such a talent discrepancy between both of these teams. So uh, that could be a play here. I do think the Dodgers win the game. Um, I think St. Louis is a better team than, than the Rockies, but still, Zach Thompson on the mound going up against Bobby Miller. I, I think that there's a big discrepancy there. In terms of the total, I'll lean towards the over because I do think the Dodgers, that offense is going to continue to put up runs, and we just got to hope that St. Louis kind of puts up uh, a decent amount as well, too. So keep an eye on the pin comment for any added plays or anything like that, guys. Um, like I said, not all the player props are out right now. We did get some more, but we might add some player props down in the final plays as well. So keep an eye on that. And that's going to wrap for me today. If you guys did enjoy the show, if you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button as well. Baby steps into this MLB season, right? Baby steps. We don't need to blow our load all in the first week. I know there's some excitement and everything like that, but you got to be smart about this. We still have NBA. We still, now we're jumping into MLB. Like, this is money we're talking about here. Be smart. You know what I'm saying? So, we'll catch you guys. With that being said, we'll catch you guys in the next one, right? Peace out. Thank you.